Welcome back. In this step, we would look at starters. We would look at a couple of example starters, Spring Boot Starter Web and Spring Boot Starter JPM. If you open up the pom.xml of the project that we have created earlier, you would see that it's using Spring Boot Starter Web. How did it use Spring Boot Starter Web? That's because we configured a dependency on web in here. So if I open that up and go to the pom.xml, you'd see that the Spring Boot Starter Web is configured in here. So the Spring Boot Starter Web is the preferred starter for Spring Boot to develop web applications as well as RESTful web services. So if I go control and hover over it or command and hover over it and click open pom.xml for Spring Boot Starter Web, you would see that it defines varied kind of dependencies. So what does it really define? Let's look at it. When we run the application, we were automatically using Tomcat. That's because of this Spring Boot Starter Tomcat. If you look at Spring Boot Starter Web, it contains a dependency on Spring Boot Starter Tomcat. And that's how the application is automatically running in Tomcat. The other things which you would see in here are Spring Web and Spring Web MVC. Spring MVC, as you would know, is the Spring MVC framework. I add in a Spring Boot Startup Web, I automatically get Spring MVC, I automatically get validation. Validation, the default implementation for Java Validation API is Hibernate Validator. So I get that as well, and I get Tomcat, and also I get the starter JSON. The starter JSON is more for RESTful web services. We saw that when we actually invoke the RESTful web service, the conversion to JSON automatically happened. If you actually looked at our code, we just returned the bean back. So in the books controller, what we are doing is we are just returning a list of beans back. How is it automatically converted to JSON? That's done through the starter. The starter JSON brings in JSON binding into the picture. Basically, when you look at all starter projects, they have a set of dependencies that are already defined. And these dependencies are automatically provided to our project. So when I add in Spring Boot Starter Web, I get all these dependencies. So you'd see that I'm getting Jackson for handling all the JSON stuff. You'd see that I'm getting Tomcat so that I can run the application in Tomcat. I'm getting Hibernate Validator and Validation API for doing the validation. I'm getting the Spring Framework because I have a dependency on Spring Web and that would have a dependency on Spring Framework. And also, I would get the logging frameworks as well because the logging frameworks are by default defined in the Spring Boot Starter. So Spring Boot Starter is one of the dependencies in Spring Boot Starter Web. So if you open up the pom.xml for it, so the, this is the default starter. This is where everything inherits from. So any starter that you would use in Spring Boot, it inherits from Spring Boot Starter. And you'd see that this has a dependency on Spring Boot Framework. This has a dependency on Spring Boot Auto Configure. That's how we get auto configuration. This has a dependency on Spring Boot Starter Logging. That's how we would get logging. And we have dependency on Spring Core as well. YAML is one of the configuration languages that Spring Boot supports. So we also have Snake YAML in here. Thing about Spring Boot Starter Web is once it brings in all these dependencies, what would kick in? Auto configuration would kick in because the Spring Web MVC contains dispatcher servlet. So automatically dispatcher servlet would be configured. That's done by the Spring Boot auto configure. That's the auto configuration which we talked about earlier. Spring Boot Starter Web is one of the starters. The other starter you can see in here is Spring Boot Starter Test. Spring Boot Starter Test enables you to write unit tests and integration tests as well. So if I go to the pom.xml in here, you would see that it has a definition on Spring Boot test. It has a definition on the auto configure for Spring Boot test. And it has dependencies on JUnit framework, assertj, and also you have Mockito. Mockito is the default mocking framework that comes along with Spring Boot. A combination of assertj and Hamcrest are awesome to write great matchers.
and you also have a dependency on the spring test framework which is useful in writing unit tests for spring so until now we looked at couple of starters which has spring boot starter web and spring boot starter test other than that another important starter which is frequently used is spring boot starter jpa if you know jpa jpa is kind of the interface for hibernate so jpa defines how orm applications or orm frameworks should work orm is object relational mapping let's now add in a dependency on spring boot starter jpa you would see now that there would be a lot more maven dependencies which would come in actually it's spring boot starter data jpa so now we have hibernate core hibernate jpa you have javax transaction api hibernate common annotations you have spring data spring data jpa spring orm spring tx and a lot of such dependencies come in that's because of the spring boot starter jpa so if you open up the pond.xml for spring boot starter jpa then you would see all the dependencies that are listed down so this has a dependency on spring boot starter aop starter jdbc hibernate transaction api and spring data jpa so all these jars you would get so as soon as i add in a spring boot starter data jpa i would get all these things for free one of the things you need to remember is if you are a starting programmer or this is the first time you are looking at spring boot a lot of things might be confusing to you especially because we are referring to so many different terminologies spring boot solves problems for wide variety of frameworks so there are a lot of terminologies that come into picture when we talk about spring boot so if you are not able to understand any of these terminologies do not worry at all over the course of this course and also over the course of your next few years you would learn sufficiently enough so that those terminologies become really clear for you the idea for you is to understand the big picture of what spring boot does spring boot is now one of the most popular frameworks to develop microservices the idea behind the whole set of these steps is to give you a flavor of spring boot in wide variety of scenarios if you are not able to understand a couple of scenarios that's not a problem at all with that disclaimer let's end this step here and i'll look forward to see you in the next step